Andy Andrews is a professor of natural science at Boston University. He's also taught at Tufts and Harvard here in Boston on a wide range of topics that kind of are the access of where science and sports physiology meet baseball. You've taught a sabermetrics class at Tufts. So we're hoping you can provide kind of a unique perspective on the role of steroids and performance enhancing drugs here in Boston on World Series week. So it's an exciting time to be here. So I guess the like fundamental question, at least to start with, is how much steroids make a difference as a baseball player. There's, some, there's a wide range of opinion on that, I guess. Yeah, and the range varies from it doesn't matter at all to hugely affecting outcomes of you know, home run records and really changing things. It turns out that steroids will increase your strength on the order of 5 10%-ish, you know, nothing much greater than that. And that strength will actually probably improve your ability to swing the bat a bit faster as a baseball batter. Probably impacts pitching a bit too. But you're talking about some outcome on batted ball distance here, which is on the order of only maximally, you know, 5 10%. But that, you know, that you can imagine makes a difference. And does it help you get put the bat on the ball or it just helps you hit it further? The physiology is clear. You will have better bat, bat speed. I mean, I don't think that uh, it's been measured well yet, but the, it, you know, the sequence of events is there so that they can swing the bat faster. And if Barry Bonds can swing the bat faster, he can wait that millisecond or two or three longer on the pitch. And if that, you know, that kind of waiting for the ball just gives him that slightest advantage to maybe see the ball better, and I think that improves his ability to discern the strike zone and therefore hit the ball better. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, but it's so slight that it wouldn't make a difference in anyone else. But the, the person who's on, you know, at the extremes of the talent level here, a, a millisecond or two might make a difference. One argument some people make, and I actually think this is kind of silly, but people make it, is, well, the pitchers are doing it too, so in a way it's a level playing field. Yeah, uh, there is this effect of steroid use on your muscle repair and recovery. It seems to really help recovery. And so it may help pitchers, especially relief pitchers who have to recover maybe a little faster than normal. It may help, help relief pitchers come back the next day with better muscle regeneration because of the physiology of the steroids improving you know, yeah. their repair. Uh, but I, I don't think it's, there's a whole lot of evidence that all of a sudden fastballs go five miles an hour faster for a pitcher. That doesn't seem to be the case. So do you think it helps batters more than pitchers? That, it's really hard to say. I, to, to quantify the impact here is difficult because of the pitching motion, uh, you know, I, I don't know what a whole lot, a lot more strength will do. I think the pitchers being strong has a lot to do with their ability to withstand the, the, the long season and the recovery times. Yeah. It might impact, you know, I think what you've seen is when batters get stronger, they hit the ball farther. But I'm not sure there's a whole lot of evidence that pitches have gotten faster with steroid usage. And anywhere near five miles an hour, I don't think that's true at all. I don't think there's any evidence of that. But batted balls seem to have gotten farther. Now, the explanation for that could be just changing the ball or changing the bat. I mean, those things can absolutely impact batted ball distance. Yeah, I think that's interesting that you give some credence to the live ball theory, that sure. maybe it's the ball. Oh, I think it absolutely could be the ball. You know, the, the, the frequency, the increasing frequency of home runs could be definitely just, you know, there is sort of this shrinking effect that post the 94 strike, there's a shrinking field effect. But, you know, walls have been coming in, the right. outfield walls. That's certainly going to impact home runs. The, no one knows a whole lot about how Major League Baseball is telling the baseball manufacturers what to do, what, what, you know, what their you know, uh, guidelines are for the, the coefficient of restitution, the bounciness of the ball. But maybe they did. They, maybe there was some directive that said, we need a liver ball because we need more home runs. And that certainly could be a huge piece of this. Yeah, but I thought, especially after Game of Shadows came out, and there seemed to be this building, this increasing body of evidence that steroid use probably was an issue, especially with some of the, the biggest home run hitters mm -hmm. in that era. That the live ball thing almost seemed like a way of denying what we all saw, which was that Barry Bonds had a different body at 37 than he had at 27. 
So as someone who comes to it specifically from the physiology perspective, doesn't that strike you as pretty relevant or no? The live ball? No, 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 the, the, the body. When you look at how Barry Bond's body has changed, and he's certainly not the only example, but he's an easy go-to. Sure. Do you say from your science perspective, hmm, this, this seems not quite right? Well, let's say it was done just completely without steroids, which is a possibility. People can change their phenotype, increase their muscle mass with weight training. And if that's the case and he got stronger, I submit that he improved his ability to hit the ball farther just by his, just by his weight training. But see, weight training effects on your muscle are independent, it seems like, of steroid use and its impact on muscle. It seems like there are two different things you can do. You can turn the one dial to improve your strength with, by weight training, and you can improve the other, turn the dial by steroid usage. I don't know what he did necessarily, but clearly he got stronger. And to me, that explains an awful lot of his ability to hit more home runs, his strength. Yeah. So you look at Bonds and say it may be totally legit. I have no idea. I, I think the game of shadows evidence tilts tilts me to go one way. I mean, yeah. you see that evidence, and you're going, it, it looks like he probably was a steroid user. Now, when you say there are two dials, does that mean I can take steroids and not lift a single weight and still get stronger? Absolutely. You, you today could start taking anabolic steroids, and within weeks you will, be, you will lose body fat, you will gain muscle mass, and you will be stronger, even if you don't lift weights. Because there's this idea out there that you need to do both. Right. Well, that's the, the research clearly shows that steroid use without weight training improves strength and muscle mass and l lowers body fat, too. Now, how about with HGH? Because there's this perception that now with the steroid testing in place and without a good test for HGH, that that's what especially baseball players and a lot of different athletes are turning to. When you look at the research, you actually go to the science and where they've done a, a design study to see just the impact of HGH on getting stronger, there's nothing there. And when you do that with steroids, you clearly see the muscle mass gains and you clearly see the strength gains. So people get stronger and bigger. When you do it with HGH, and in this clinical trial design, you get a little bit bigger, but you really don't seem to increase your strength at all. How bad are the side effects or long-term effects of steroids? The long-term effects are pretty un, you know, unknown. No one's really looked at, you know, no one's really documented usage in a big cohort very reliably to show real outcomes. There are short-term effects of steroid usage. And uh, the, the thing that it seems to be clear, though, is if you sort of cycle your steroids and you don't take huge doses of these things, that the side effects are reversible. It seems pretty clear that, you know, people aren't really keeling over and dying from steroid usage, believe it or not, even though, the, you know, it's the public health has heard it's really huge side effects. People who take just small doses all those physiological things that change, and there are a lot of things that change if you take steroids, they come back to normal. They snap back. 